All right, this is first grade module two, lesson 20. And in this lesson, we're really starting to generalize all of the subtraction strategies that we've been using because now we're gonna be subtracting by nine, eight, and seven. So we're really starting to expand how we, how we are able to use our strategies. Uh, let's get going. So when you really think about it, this lesson is just the classic subtraction worksheets. Uh, the, only the big difference is at this point, our students are armed with more than just one strategy or their just requirement of memorizing their answers. At this point, our students have a variety of strategies at their disposal, and they get to choose which method they want to use for each problem. They do not have to use the same strategy uh, on every single problem. They can mix and match as they please. Uh, so I'm going to think about, let's do 15 minus 9, and I'm going to do 15 minus 9 as the count on method. So I'm going to say, well, we're going to start with 9, and I know that I'm going to add 1 to get to 10, and then it's going to be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, whoa, 15. Uh, so I can see that I've got 6 right here, because that's 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six. So that tells me that 15 minus 9 was 6. Now, was that the most efficient method? Nah, I could have used another strategy that might have been more efficient, but I'm just trying to show you that our students get the privilege of choosing whichever strategy makes the most sense for them at that particular moment. For 15 minus 8, oh, let's mix it up. Let's do the subtract from 10 strategy. So I'm going to decompose... I'm going to subtract from 10, that gives me 2, plus the original 5 gives me 7. So there's another um, solution. And the last one, now we're subtracting by 7. Oh, uh, this one, I'm going to mix it up even more. I'm going to say, oh, let's think about 15. There, there's our drawing for 15 minus 7, and I'm going to cross off 7. So that's going to be this first row plus these two, and I can see that what's left after I've subtracted? Well, 3 plus 5 gives me 8. So starting with that 7, I've got 3 more to fill out the first 10 frame. Plus, I've got the 5 left over from the 15. So 3 plus 5 is 15. So we've got a variety of strategies. Let your students choose. Although we are going to be asking them to metacognitively think about what is the most efficient strategy for each problem. And ideally, ultimately, we want students to uh, have these num answers memorized, but from a position of number sense rather than just memorizing. Uh, we're supposed to read the math story and then use a drawing or a number bond to show how we know that we're right. So it says, Elise says, no, Elsie. Elsie says that the expressions 17 minus 8 and 18 minus 9 are equal. John says they are not. So who's right? Well, let's do some subtraction to find out. I'm going to use that number bond and subtract from 10 method here. So 10 minus 8 is 2 plus the 7 gives us 9, and then over here, 18 minus 9. Now, this is a doubles, so your students might just off the top of their head know that, the, oh, this answer is 9 because it's a doubles. 9 plus 9 is 18. But if they don't, that's all right. Uh, I'd probably use the subtract from 10 method. So I'm going to decompose 18. I'm going to subtract 9 from that 10. So 10 minus 9 is 1 plus the original 8 from the 18 gives me 9, and sure enough. So they are the exact same answer. So that tells us that Elsie is correct. Another example, John says the expressions 11 minus 8 and 12 minus 8 are not equal. Elsie says they are equal. Who's right? Well, you know, some students might be able to get this answer, whoa, gee, might get this answer without even subtracting. And they might get that answer by saying, well, 11 minus 8, 12 minus 8, you're subtracting the same number both times, uh, but you have a different starting point. So obviously the answers are not equal. Another way 
is let's just um, use the number bonds method or the count on strategy. I'm going to use the count on strategy for this first one because 8 is 2 away from 10 and then we have one more to get to 11. So 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So that means 11 minus 8 is 3. 12 minus 8, oh, let's do the take from 10 strategy. So I'm going to decompose the 12. I'm going to get 10 minus 8 is 2, plus the original 2. I get 4. So I've got 4 over here. I've got 3 over here. So they are definitely not equal. Now here... It says you've got these constraints. You're trying to find several subtraction sentences that start with numbers larger than 10 and have an answer of 7. So we're always going to be looking for something that has an answer of 7. Um, find a bunch. And you can see that they've started us off with 16 minus 9 is 7. Parents and teachers, this is the kind of beautiful problem-solving where if you can spend the bulk of your time right here letting students find a variety of answers that work, let them share their ideas and their strategies for how they came across some problems that have an answer of seven. This is also a great way for students to differentiate themselves because, boy, some students might get something as large as 55 minus 48 equals seven. And in first grade, boy, that's really differentiating high. You might even change the constraints to differentiate on the low side. And that wraps up first grade module two, lesson 20. Just Practicing subtracting from seven, uh, subtracting by seven, eight, and nine from our teens.